So the wonderful news is, yes, we are clear. Our minds are radiant and clear at all times. And that's what we're getting to know about ourselves. That our mind is completely radiant and clear. That there's this complete well-being and ease at all times that we just haven't recognized. Or maybe we've had glimpses, but we were never taught or trained or it was never role modeled to become familiar with that ease of being, to recognize our innate power, our, prim our primordial beneficial nature. Just to, just to know how, ben how beneficial we really are, these beneficial beings, that's just really incredible. Recognizing our innate open intelligence in every moment. And to do that, to be introduced to open intelligence, we simply stop thinking for a moment. Just for a brief moment, pause your train of thought. Allow it to be exactly as it is without describing anything. And right there you recognize that there's something so clear about you, so stable, so bright, alert, alive. That power to know, always on. And the magical thing is, it's always on whether we're thinking or not thinking. So we can never get out of open intelligence, it's always on. So when a thought arises, an emotion, a sensation, which we term as data, to keep it really simple here, we see that that open intelligence, that ease of being, is inseparable from what's coming up from the data. <coughs> Completely inseparable. That power to know fuels the next thought or emotion or sensation. So we wouldn't be able to recognize our thoughts and emotions, sensations, and experiences without this power to know. They're completely inseparable, like the color blue in the sky. And so, I just know for myself, I, I was never taught that. And I very easily got into um, indulging in all my thoughts, or replacing, or avoiding. Because that's what I saw was taking place around me. Indulging in all the, the negative data to, to mean that we're a victim to life and uh, we're a bad person because we have a bad thought. Or um, if we have an, a funny sensation or emotion that means something's wrong. We shouldn't be having this nervousness or anxiousness or... Well, that's how it was for me. I really felt very flawed for being so worried and nervous and anxious all the time. And, um, yeah, I was really hard on myself. So whenever I felt these things, I, I really tried to replace them in some way. Have a better thought. Do something positive. Avoid the situations which would bring up the, the, the anxiety or the nervousness. Or indulge or, or yeah um, but did I find well-being there no we've tried it we've tried it again and again and again and where does it lead us nowhere we may have some relief for a brief moment or some time but that too is fleeting it self-releases. And then we're back in our story, trying to find well-being, trying to feel okay, trying to eliminate the negative data, thoughts and emotions and sensations, and only focus on the positive, thinking that that's the only way that we'll, um, that we'll live a successful life and be okay and be a good person and you know, whatever it may be. So for me, it was the greatest relief 
to recognize in myself through my own experience of just relaxing for brief moments, one moment at a time. The simple practice here being short moments repeatedly until it becomes obvious and continuous. A short moment, just relax body and mind and don't describe. And there's complete well-being there. Whether we're having a raging negative thought or a happy blissful thought, completely equal and even. Because we start to see in our direct experience that every thought, emotion, sensation arises from this natural perfection, from open intelligence. It abides and it naturally resolves. Everything equal and even. Not one more open intelligency than the other. Not more one clear than the other. Which is really what I thought. (laughs) But everything completely equal and even. And how marvelous to recognize that in our own experience. And it doesn't mean that we feel numb. On the contrary, we feel so alive. (laughs) So connected with every single being. Because we start to see that every datum is this dynamic energy of open intelligence. This expression of open intelligence, of who we really are. This beneficial energy that we are. So why not really get to know yourself as this potent and powerful being? You know, we no longer need to fear our data. It has no power over us. We can really stand up for our birthright and recognize that every single datum just fuels our power to serve and to be of benefit to ourselves and to everyone. Just by relaxing, just by being ourselves completely, hooray. I mean, it's incredible. I was just thinking today, all I need to do is be myself. That's all I need to do. I just need to be myself. Just allow all my data to be exactly as it is. Open it up completely. See that it naturally resolves like a rainbow with its vivid colors, and we try and hold on to these, these beautiful rainbows, thinking, oh, if I have this rainbow in my pocket, it will bring me well-being. It's so beautiful, I want to just treasure it. <coughs> but that too just naturally <coughs> dissolves in space. And same with our data. No matter how vivid, they naturally resolve in open intelligence, completely inseparable. But the greatest gift is to simply rest in our power of great benefit. To rest deeply and allow all our data to be exactly as it is. And allow everyone else to be exactly as they are. It's really connecting heart to heart. That heart essence, open intelligence. The essence of all (coughs) beings. We are inseparable from one another, inseparable from open intelligence, inseparable from this incredible perfection and beauty that we see around us. That is who we are. And so by us relying on open intelligence and the four mainstays, which is the magnificent support system that we have here, out of this world, (laughs) Taking short moments whenever we naturally remember to do so. And then coming to open meetings, joining clarity calls, enjoying the texts and the talks online. The the website is, is so rich, so beautiful. Everything bringing back to our natural perfection, the direct transmission of who we really are. It seeps in naturally without trying to understand it. It just works its magic. I tried to understand it. It didn't get anywhere. So by really resting, it was that instinctive recognition that completely opened up. And that's where I saw the power, recognizing myself as open intelligence. Just natural. You know, if we want community somewhere, then it's up to us. How much time and energy and resources do we want to put this 
put into this? What is our commitment? Because our example is so powerful. So that's how community grows. That's what I see in Bristol. You know, it takes one person, and then people are so drawn by that example. And we see that worldwide, and we see it growing, spreading to all corners of the world, because people are recognizing that there's something so, so natural, so open-hearted. Recognizing themselves, yes, I, I really want to live this way. That's the power of community, the fourth mainstay. Our example is so, so powerful before, beyond trying to understand it. We just recognize this complete stability and ease in the other person. That's, that's what I found when I went to the open meetings. And even though I didn't understand what was being said and I would often fall asleep, Something drew me back again and again. It was like this magnet. It's like, yes, I want this in my life. I want to train this up. I want to get to know myself fully. I no longer want to be a victim to my data. I want to shine like the sun, and I want everybody else to shine like the sun too, so that we can shine together and be of benefit to all. <clears throat> 